Henry, look, mm -hmm. Nigel Farage, this poll's come out by Aaron Banks, basically says you can win Clacton. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Giles Watling, the Conservative MP, thinks of that. We're actually trying to get in touch with him and see if we can get yeah. him on, on, on the show. Um, but, 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 but actually, he hasn't had a successful track record, Nigel Farage, of winning seats, and I know how hard it is. Believe me, I've lost more than I've won. Uh, but this time, he must be tempted. Will, will, will he run as an MP, do you think? I, I, I'm sure there's temptation there. However, I mean, Nigel's got to weigh up a lot of things, and I, I don't know uh, this, uh, but I'm, I'm speculating because I've seen a lot of people saying, well, Nigel should get back into it. He must, you know, why isn't he, what, you know, what about, what's his involvement with reform? Why wasn't he at the reform launch and so on? And I, I'm just purely speculating um, that... Uh, he's also looking at what's going to happen in the United States. We've got the presidential election that's happening in November. Um, Nigel is close to Donald Trump. Um, and I think that his preference uh, for, you know, he's tired of British politics. He'd like some a, global international yeah, role. Well, global international role. He would like, I think, to go out there and on the stomp with Donald Trump um, as a sort of do, doing some sort of warm-up speeches and the so on. The man who delivered in, Brexit, all that to stuff. All of that, Mr Brexit, which he's still be known for and Donald will sort of still push that. So I think he would enjoy that. I think then if, if, if Trump became president, then there would be probably further work for it, for Nigel. Uh, I think he enjoys the United States. He enjoys the glamour of it. He enjoys the sort of political uh, life there, and I think that's what he would prefer to do. But of course, if he, if if that's what he wants to do, then he won't stand for Parliament, uh, oh, particularly if there's an early uh, 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 because he, he if if he's a member of Parliament, then he it'll queer his pitch in terms of being able to go out there and do that. Interesting. Um, and the same with his involvement with the reform. If it's, a, if it's a late election, then how can he be front and centre of reforms well, campaign the, if he's over in the and, states? And who's leader Trump? of reform? Nigel Farage or Richard Tice. Now, I asked uh -huh. Richard Tice this in a separate interview that goes out on uh, 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 on Monday evening, and he was he was very he he would not come off the fence. It was mm. oh, let's wait and see what he does. You're obsessed asking about who's going to lead reform, and I don't think it's unreasonable if you have got a political party that you know who the leader is. Last mm -hmm. time, last time it was tried to have joint leaders. It was the SDP, I think, and that didn't end well, did it? So I didn't get. I didn't get the, oh, we love Nigel and we'd have him back as leader. And, and obviously Richard's getting into his stride in the well, run-up to an election. Well, I know, I know both men and, and I get on with both of them um, quite well. Some differences on politics. But, um, but I think, first of all, it's difficult for Richard, if, if I'm right about Nigel sort of still weighing yeah, because up because the prevarication of Nigel makes it difficult for Richard. It actually does. Yeah, um, yeah. And f how, how do you, you know, with you, you've got a character like Nigel who's not made up his mind yet and your leader of a party who's being asked, well, what's happening with Nigel? And you don't know. Mm. And that's a difficult I mean, place to be. I mean, we are working, for... as Dan points out to me from Kent, on the mm. assumption he would stand as a reform candidate, but the article kind of implied that. And he is, is he honorary president or something? Of, he is, yeah. Reform? yeah of reform. So it'd be unusual if he didn't. It would be, but... It, but he will be weighing up his odds. And I think the other thing to say, and I don't mean this unkindly to, to Richard or, or anybody, but, but Nigel is a larger-than-life character. Yeah. And all other things being equal amongst political parties... Um, and politicians, if, Char if they were. Re recognition matters. Then, then character, personality, charisma um, mm. actually does matter. One of the first rules of leadership is you've got to have which, personality. Which explains why I only got one term, maybe. <laughs> right, listen, bear with us. We're going to take a couple of calls because I keep promising people calls are the priority, so let's prove that. Let's first go to Marianne in Kent, then we'll go to Janice in Essex. Hello, Marianne. Yes, hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, thank you for calling. What can we, uh, what can we do for you? Um, I was just about to say, I know there's uh, what's happening around the world it's, mm. and all the fighting that's taking place. It's really, really bad. But I just feel with our politicians, um, when we actually make a vote, and of course Conservatives are in still at the moment, mm -hmm. I just feel that with all the other parties, all these years are like wasted space. It's like they're always arguing mm. amongst themselves and nothing ever gets sorted. So I sometimes feel, wouldn't it be better if the British people vote for a party, then let that party look after the country and sort out the problems in the country, and they await their turn until they're elected? You see, that would mean effectively, if I understand you, no opposition. 
um, you're kind of saying elect you, mm -hmm. you crack on, deliver agenda, and then everyone comes back in five years. Constructive opposition can be a good thing, I think, Marianne. And, and, yes. and I understand your but frustration. At the same time, I just feel that they're going round and around in mm. circles, and I think the public are paying for all these other parties well, that, is that true. are not actually elected. Well, they, they're not elected into office, but each person exactly. is elected to uh, represent their constituency. Well, let me put a different point to you. I'll give you a very brief example. Wes Streeting, who actually says he's the Labour spokesman on health, he says some fairly sensible things, in my opinion. I sent him a tweet and basically said, Wes, do you know what? There's more you agree on with the Conservatives than you disagree on. That was the gist of it. Don't you think it's time that you actually, if you get into office, you reach agreement with your opposition parties on a 20-year plan for the NHS? And in a way, you can have the leadership, but you're taking the politics out. And he came back and said, in a general tweet, he didn't want to respond to me or have the courtesy to respond to me directly. He basically said, I think it's deeply ironic Tories are now calling for working together on the NHS. Well, actually, Tories have been saying we have more in common with Labour uh, than we are stand against them. And yet that was rejected because party politics comes first. You can't get them yes, to agree. Yes, but I can understand that. But I think the situation we're in now, you know, when I was like growing up, and uh, my mum had like, uh, my mum was um, from Ireland, Dublin. My dad was from uh, Lahore, Pakistan. And they worked so hard. My dad on the railway seven days a week. My mum had three jobs to give my family a good education. I just feel, you know, if there was more giving in the world and less taking, the world would be a better place. Marianne, you make a lot you know, of sense. Um, and by the way, do tune in when I'm... Uh, keep, 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 keep watching or listening when I talk crime because I think some of those basics have been forgotten, which is leading to a much more exactly, toxic... A, exactly. a much You've more toxic environment. ...for one another. And um, I know there's different... Um, when it, my mum used to say to me growing up, always have respect in life exactly um, respect and, other people's opinions it, even it, if you it disagree doesn't matter whether you, whether you're high up in a bank or you're out there cleaning bins and sweeping the roads you wouldn't get to that office in up in london if i wasn't there sweeping the roads exactly exactly i might tell you a story about a sweeper one day um uh, if i remember to do that but marianne thank you very much for that very brief comment mm. from you on what Marianne said. I think we have to have an opposition, don't we? And then I'll go to Janice. I think we do. I think that Marianne identifies a problem, but perhaps it's the wrong solution. Um, what we actually, I think, need to get back into life is the, a, a, an ethos of service. service. Um, that needs to be clear to the to the public that politicians are th are there because they want to do good, um, and I think we also need to have competent politicians who are able to put a plan together. One of the reasons that I mean, if if we followed Marianne's approach, I don't think we would get any further because I think there is a uh, the, there is a problem in terms of some of the ca capability and capacity, the knowledge, the experience of some of our politicians and the civil service. The civil civil service is not what it was even uh, two mm. three decades mm. ago. Mm. Um, so I think there's a whole lot of things that we need to change. I think at the end of the day, it's all about having competency and, and the right ethos. Now, how we get to that is a discussion we should have. I've got a lot of ideas, but I think, you know, we've you not got the time You probably can't do those now, no. but, but this is a very deep conversation. It is, and, and it's very important. Marianne's key point there was about service actually to your country mm -hmm. and respect uh, respect for other people's Indeed. positions and points. And, and but, just very briefly yes, on yes. that, of course, one of the things that we're doing is we are, and, and this isn't a criticism of other cultures, but we are bringing in hundreds of thousands of people from other cultures who, of course, they're other cultures. They have different social Completely, values, absolutely. different social behaviours, different social priorities. And that we are importing that, and therefore we are unavoidably um, diluting our own, in a sense, with that mix. Well, I, I also... not necessarily yeah. to judge, you know, what happens in other no, countries, but, basically but what it, you're it saying has an impact. In here. Integration so does not necessarily So the values and work. ethos are, are, are different, uh, right, rightly or wrongly, they are different. And when that happens, we go through change, which is making a great many people in this country quite uncomfortable. Uh, it's the speed of change and the, out, and the outcome of change. It, Let's indeed. not be frightened of saying that as well.